Hey you guys, want to come on here and give you a quick update because uh, uh, one of my followers here, David Armstrong, said, man, if you don't give us an update, we're going to revolt. Well, he didn't say that exactly, but I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but that was the gist of it. So, And I was due for an update anyway. Actually, about a week ago, I tried to make a video, but I was on the beach and it was kind of shaky. And it was very windy and it just didn't translate. It just wasn't good. You know, I'm not trying to make anybody sick. I'm not trying to give you vertigo and dizziness and, and nausea. So, um, if it's not quite up to my, you know, par as far as the sound and the, um, the quality here, I'll just uh, remake the video, make you wait a little bit. But, uh, yeah, I hope everyone's summer's going well. Mine is going pretty well. Um feel a lot less stressed after I made some changes that I talked about in the last video. And um, in my last video, my last update, I talked about how I'd fallen off the ADF wagon. And I wondered kind of what the repercussions of that would be, you know, whether I would gain weight or lose weight or stay the same. And I learned something else as a result of that experience. I learned that um, even if I was to take probably a week or maybe even two weeks off of ADF, um, if I went back to my regimen of eating one day and not eating the next, you know, within a few days, I would be stabilized. That's what I learned. When you, when you gain weight after losing weight on ADF or probably any other way, uh, when you gain some weight back, you know, and go back to your uh, you know, eating what you want there every day or whatever, yeah, you'll put a little weight on, but it'll be water. So that's good to know. And then you lose water real quickly when you go back to fasting. And just probably because your water intake increases, you lose water weight really quickly. So that was good to know. In terms of the sensational stuff, the stuff that people that makes people click on my videos, I have lost um, I have lost weight this month, the month of June, even though I, I took almost a week off from ADF. Um, even though Father's Day fell in there and I ate some cake, even though my son's birthday was in there and I ate some cake again. Uh, in fact, they were on the same day, so I ate double the cake. I doubled my pleasure, y'all. Um, still lost weight. I'm down over 60 pounds since I started on March 1st. That's four months. In four months, I've lost over 60 pounds. And um, I'm currently, as of two days ago, I'm 252. I'm fasting today, so... Um, the weight loss continues, you know, I mean, it just works. If you want quick results, um, it works to, to, you know, ADF works. Intermittent fasting works. It's easy to do. It doesn't cost any money. And, uh, in fact, it saves money. One of the things I notice, I'll expand on that a little bit, is I've noticed that on my fast days, um, I'm still cooler than normal on fast days. I don't mean cool, like, you know, Joe Cool hanging out by the water fountain, but cool temperature wise and uh i'm not sure exactly why that is you know i've had um uh, i've noticed it on feast days after the after my eating that i will actually feel warmer i have to jack that air conditioner a little bit and uh sit in front of a fan when i'm doing my work or whatever because i just feel so much warmer i guess the metabolism and and the blood going to the center of the body to digest the food and all that and then uh, sometimes, like when I wake up, I'll, st I'll be w even warmer, you know, into the next morning after a feast day. But on my fast days, I'm cooler. And this is a real change for me because I've always been the hot-natured dude, the crazy guy that wears the shorts in the wintertime. And I've noticed that on those days, I'm turning that air conditioner down. I'm, I'm like, mm, it's, it's just too cool in here. So I'm putting it, you know, around 60, uh, 76 or somewhere around there. And my normal preference is to have an environment that's around 70 degrees. So, uh, you know, it's interesting. I'm saving money even on the electric bill this summer. So that's appreciated. But, yeah, you know, I'm down 60 pounds overall. I had no weight gain as a result of uh, falling off the wagon for almost a week and eating some cake and stuff like that. So it's been good. Now, one of the ways that I offset that cake is I did have towards the end of this month, so in the last two weeks, uh, I had two extended fasts of 60 hours. So, um, you know, kind of just stretched it out a little bit, two days, three nights of fasting, 
And, um, you know, I noticed they were almost back to back. What I did was I had a Thursday and Friday that, uh, that I fasted, and that's zero cal fasting. And then I ate on Saturday and Sunday, and then I did another 60 on Monday and Tuesday. Towards the end, towards the Tuesday, towards the end of the second 60-day fast, I was feeling pretty weak. I was, like, ready to eat, you know. And But I got through it. And, and one thing I've learned, anytime you do an extended fast or go beyond where you're used to, your body rebels a little bit. It takes a little bit of effort and willpower to get through that. <clears throat> but, but the positive side of it is it... Um, it makes your shorter fast so much easier. You know, it just, it puts it in perspective to where you're just like, well, I just did 60 hours. I think I can do 36, you know. Um, so not recommending um, longer fasts like that, but uh, but to me, it's it's one positive advantage besides the weight loss, which is stellar and, and works, is that it puts those smaller fasts in perspective. You know, they seem a lot easier. So... That's one thing that's happened here in the last two weeks is I did two 60-hour fasts, basically um, sandwiched those in between 60 hours of eating. So that was interesting. <clears throat> uh, let's see. What else? Oh, very important here. This should have been in the sensational part. My blood pressure has stabilized. That's right. All through this month of June, uh, my blood pressure, I get it taken every two weeks for sure and sometimes every week. But... um you know, in my first video, I was talking about how I was not in the high blood pressure stage, but I was getting pretty close. And my blood pressures in terms of the actual numbers have been ranging for the past three years in the range of 145 over 90, 150 over 90, uh, at the point, pre-hypertension point, where the doctors start saying, well, uh, maybe we should put you on high blood pressure medication, you know, because... It's creeping up there. And uh, I made a video after about a month of ADF that talked about other things that had normalized for me. So cholesterol, blood glucose, uh, lipids, triglycerides, those sorts of things. Uh, I was doing pretty well. But high blood pressure was the last holdout. You know, that blood pressure just kind of like was still high and even after my weight loss began. And uh, so the good news is this month I started to see a difference. Now my blood pressures are in normal range. For those of you who don't know, that's 120 over 80. And mine's been running and on average about 119 over 77. And that's with a lot of stressful stuff going on, a lot of busyness. So I know that stress was not driving my high weight loss or my high uh, blood pressure readings in the last three years what was driving those the highness of those was the the fact that I was just carrying around too much weight and now that the weight is down apparently once I got to about 50 pounds and lost that weight um, it started to normalize my butt my body has caught up the heart's caught up so good news there blood pressure stabilized that's another uh, that was kind of like the last um, overall fitness indicator that worried me that I thought, you know, hmm, if, I, if something doesn't happen here soon, I'm actually going to be in that stroke range where I'm worried about a stroke or a heart attack or something like that. And uh, as far as a, a risk indicator, it's down now, it's normalized. And so when I go back to the doctor in September for my six-month appointment, I can say, you know what, I don't need that blood, blood pressure medication. So thank you, uh, alternate day fasting, and, and the hard work that I've put in has paid off in that regard as well so uh, hopefully it keeps up <clears throat> and talking about hard work sorry about that little interruption my wife texted me and I had to get back to her so that happens sometimes um, talking about hard work um, I am a student part-time and I took this class um, called fitness and wellness and I thought I might learn something from it even though I was a little skeptical and doubtful because I was worried that they would just say uh, exercise your brains out and don't eat fat and uh, double down on a bunch of the information and the stuff that hasn't worked in the last 40 years and one of my pet peeves actually is that you know 
on all of my videos and in fact on other fasters, other intermittent fasters and people who talk about fasting on YouTube, there's always one or two people who dislike the videos. And especially the ones where we talk about how much weight we've lost. You know, it's so funny that people just kind of get stuck <clears throat> in the myth that there's only one way to lose weight. There's only one right way to lose weight. I really think weight loss is kind of like mathematics. It's kind of like um, the fact that there are some people who've just learned, you know, the formulas. And in fact, when I was in school, that's what I learned. I learned to use formulas to get to the answer. But, uh, and there's been this huge uproar about common core math and, and the fact that there's a different approach to math that people don't understand and therefore hate because they don't understand it. But um, I kind of went back to that common core and learned some of it. And I was like, when I did that, I was like, man, this makes way more sense as a way to provide the information to help the student understand what's going on with these numbers instead of just saying, here's your rule that you follow to get to the right answer, right? So, you know, weight loss is kind of like that. It's funny. Every time I read an article or um, hear someone express a view that's outside the mainstream, there's always a bunch of haters that come out and say, no, 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 you must lose weight this way. The way the government says, and, and let me tell you something about what the government says. The government has failed to help people understand how to maintain their weight. Their policies have are the reason, the policies that were passed when I was a kid in the 80s and early 90s, are the reason that, the, that we have, you know, a loaf of fat-free food is posted on a thing of packages of Swedish fish. Okay, and there's so much confusion about... Um, the foods that we should eat, and so much conflicting information. But anyways, I mean, there are just some people, they are just stuck on their way, and they just don't allow for the fact that people could lose weight in some other way. And anyway, this course is like that. It's, it's just one-sided, and uh, there really aren't a lot of alternative viewpoints that are expressed. You know, the biggest success story is the person who's lost weight. That's the person I want to listen to. I don't care about whether you're philosophizing or whether you agree with the theories of uh, low fat, high fat, low carb, high carb, you know, whatever. What matters to me is did you get results? Did you get to the result? And were you able to maintain it? That's what matters to me and that's what I listen to and that's what I'm interested in. But not everyone is that way. So anyway, I had to take this class, and as part of the class, I had to join a gym. Now, those of you who've watched some of my videos and have learned about it, I do exercise. I believe in the benefits of exercise. I don't agree that exercise is the best way to lose weight. I think that exercise is probably 10% of the equation or less, and diet and, and what we eat and when we eat is... 90% of the equation. So exercise is important because you get benefits from it that you can't get from diet alone. But diet is the primary, the, you know, the perfect example is the fact that you can go out and you can run for 30 minutes and burn maybe 300 calories, 350, somewhere in that range, whatever you burn, that can all be ruined if you eat two Krispy Kreme donuts. That's just how easy it is to screw it up, and, how, and it shows the disparity of our control over um, our calorie expenditure. You know, most of our calorie expenditure is metabolic, and so and exercise does not significantly increase that metabolic expenditure. So primarily we have to look at what we're eating. But anyways, so I have to join this gym, you know. So I went to the gym on the first day. I have to have a, I've got a form that the gym, the gym person employee is supposed to sign to say that I was there and that I was there for a half hour and I worked on the treadmill or stationary bike or whatever. So I went into this gym. Okay. Almost all the exercise I do, you guys is solitary. Okay. And you're saying that poor, sad man, I feel so bad for him. Well, you know, no one in my family is really into exercise. And I'm going to be honest with you. I like um, I like to go out in the early morning. I like to do my exercise in the early morning while the rest of y'all are asleep. While the rest of the world is asleep. 
and it's almost like it's quiet it's contemplative it's a mo it's time for me to reflect on the day and think about the things that i have to do and i like that i don't want to go to a gym and have to exercise and think about and be around other people and breathe their stale air of flatulent farts and 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 um armpits okay and that's just always been my philosophy. So this whole gym thing was kind of a challenge. So I went to the gym for the first time. I got on a stationary bike. I fiddled with the machine. I messed with the intensity, you know, the tension in the pedals. And after about three minutes, I was so bored, you guys. Oh my God, I was bored. I was just like, this is not, this bike does not go anywhere. I am not seeing things that I want to see and I am not breathing fresh air so I moved to a treadmill the treadmill had a big old flat screen TV in front of it so I was like maybe this will be more tolerable I fooled with the buttons on the treadmill I messed with the incline and the tension and the speed and all this stuff let me tell you something let me tell you something that I have learned that I know now about myself that is can just I just want you guys to know this I want you to be aware I hate the gym. I cannot tolerate being feeling like a gerbil running on a wheel. I can't do it, you guys. I cannot do it. I don't care if I flunk this class, the fitness and wellness class, because the whole gym environment to me is just something that I just don't get. I don't blame you if you live in a city and there is no place that's beautiful for you to walk and there's no like natural sights for you to see. I understand if you go to the gym. You know, an advantage of the gym is there's lots of machines and you can go there 24-7. But the disadvantage of the gym to me is that there's people in it and they're all sweating and they're all watching each other if they're not looking in mirrors, which I don't like to do. I'm not, I don't want to watch myself in a mirror exercise. I just want to go out and see things. You know what, you guys, a lot of times the thumbnails that I use for my videos are things that I have seen while I'm exercising. So there's like these beautiful vistas of like the ocean and and the dunes and paths, little paths that that are out there, you know. That's my interest. That's what I'm interested in. I'm interested in uh, getting out there breathing fresh, crisp morning air and um you know, just waving at people as I go by, but not having to breathe their air <clears throat> and not having to worry about who was on the seat in front of me and having to spritz it down. You know, I feel like that's the gym version of picking up dog poop. You know, having to spritz down the handles and, and the seats and everything. It's just not my scene, you guys. I, I'm sorry. I love you anyway. If you if that's all you have and, uh, and that's what you enjoy, I say do it. I'm very libertarian. Okay, I'm very uh, uh, human freedom. You go out and do whatever works for you. But it doesn't work for me. And it's just kind of upsetting me that they forced me to do this. You know, my, everything inside me is rebelling against it. So you know what I do now? I go to the gym and I scan the door. Okay? And then I leave. That's right. I scan the door to prove that I've been there in case they look it up. And then I jet and I go do the kind of exercise that I like to do. <laughs> so, you know, I'm still a lone wolf out there doing my thing. I appreciated the comment from someone named Raw Hebrew Remnant who said uh, he appreciated that I'm not a guru. I do think that sets me apart a little bit on YouTube from a lot of other people that are on YouTube. As I'm not trying to give you advice. I'm not trying to tell you how to do this or that. You know why? Because I am convinced, I really am convinced that the best expert, the number one uh, expert on weight loss and on maintaining your body and is you. You are the expert on your own body. And um, you know what it takes. I know for a fact that, you know, and a lot of my videos are about my experiences with fasting and how they've affected me. And they may not affect other people the same way. But, and I know for a fact that if I was going to the gym, I would exercise less than I do right now. Doing the things that I like to do in my own garage or out in nature. And um, so you have to know those things about yourself and keep in mind that you are your own best expert. You can figure out 
through the processes that, that you know from through trying different things you can figure out what works for you and what doesn't that's that's what's great about being a grown person with access to the internet and information is that you can figure it out i don't need to be your guru i don't need to be your uh um the expert that gets on here that gets paid by somebody to tell you what you already know and what you can figure out yourself and so uh if anything i appreciate the people who say they've been motivated to try to step out for the first time maybe and try new things try moving out in a new direction that's really what i get excited about when someone says hey i tried this because i watched your videos that's exciting but you know you have the flexibility and the and you have to be adaptable um to what your body is telling you and to uh to what you need to do and what works and what doesn't. And that's why there's no such thing as a failure. You know, it's just what works and what doesn't. And there's not just one way. Like I said, with mathematics, there's not just one way. There's not just my way, but there's things that you can do to adapt um, your diet, your exercise, your lifestyle to make it healthier and make it better. And so that's what you do. I'm not a guru. I'm just a dude. I'm just a normal dude. I don't have a six pack far from it. My six-pack is in the fridge. But, um, you know, I just kind of want to encourage you guys, those of you that are that have found some motivation, I just say, man, great. Thanks for letting me know about that. Because uh, that's something I didn't look for when I started this channel. I just It just started as a record of my own foibles and fallings and failures and, and the things that work. And there has been a lot of success. So if you know of someone else that would, that would appreciate... Uh, hearing someone like me uh, talk and ramble on, go ahead and share this channel with them. And I appreciate those of you who are watching and are interested. And I say eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we fast. Have a good one, you guys.